No One Leaves Written by Reptiles and Samurai To be fair, no one goes in either. Never seen a car swing in. Never seen anyone walk that little lane. Never seen a single sign of life there. My sister cracked jokes about it being a nuclear bunker, like an Indiana Jones, I guess. But I just spared it occasional glances as we passed it by. We'd known the neighborhood years before I actually moved in. My aunt and uncle, not ones that I was close to, lived there, so my family was saddled with driving through it at least a few times a year to pile into events where cousins I wasn't related to made fun of me to look smart, and my uncle inevitably got drunk and sang Frank Sinatra. Yeah, I don't talk to the step side of the family anymore. The houses were nice, though. A little old, some would say. Just from the 70s, but that meant that they were sturdy and had what I thought was a good mix of private rooms and that open concept that everyone's talking about. At least to me, anyway. Not that I'm a home and garden show guy. They worked for me, though. A nice living room when you walked in, bedrooms to one side and a kitchen and dining room on the other. Houses that lasted more than the new ones being built. My one co-worker said her new custom-built home was crap, already falling apart. I was happy to get a house that wasn't having to be repaired as it was being built. That little gated community, just a ways over, was the only weird thing that ever happened in my safe little suburb. And that was the problem. Nothing ever happened. It just sat there, unchanged, still. The wall around it was weird, like some really light, sandy-looking adobe. But the houses were generic, white, square, rows of identical faces standing up like freshly unbraced teeth. Or those little twins in horror movies, times ten. All we did was make fun of them when we drove by. We'd ask how the bunker dolls were doing that day. Then we would shudder. Half chills and half amusement creeping up our spines at the thought of a still, doll-populated world existing in a bubble just inside ours. It became a habit of mine to just glance over there on my evening walk. Just a furtive dart of the eyes or two towards that oddly molded wall that resembled a giant kindergartner's light beige play-doh and welcomed everyone and yet no one. Nothing ever changed, not even so much as a shadow moved. That was how it was for months in my little remodeled retro before my feet began pulling me across the street. Turning back, towards the sidewalk with faint skids at the last minute. Weeks of being drawn like a magnet, but apparently too socially awkward or something to just go and knock on a door and say, Howdy, neighbor. Except I lived like two streets over and I wasn't good enough to be a baker to drop off a cherry pie when I did so. Like in the old cartoons, you know. Tonight, though... I am finally changing that story. I'm coming up on the nearest corner to cross at now. The first one since the condemned house with straw for a lawn. It's not nighttime. I didn't want to go late and find everyone asleep. It's probably a little retirement community I had realized a while back. Except, I wondered why I had never seen any ambulances come by. What, too much? Well, at worst I feel like they'll awkwardly shoo me away. Reminding me, as if I don't know, that I'm not related to anyone there or that I'm an intruder. A boogeyman, for all they know. At best, maybe I'll find someone who needs it. Someone whose children never bothered to visit whose gardener comes all too infrequently, who can't stay on their feet for long and hard enough to mop those hard-to-reach places. Perhaps that's too idealistic, but that idea had really stuck in my mind. 
images of evoking a long hidden smile having wedged in the corners of my brain like recurring scratching sand that I hoped to turn into a pearl. Maybe that's the magnetism I've been feeling. Hey, I mean, it's better than dolls, right? Anything is better than dolls. Maybe. Maybe I just miss my grandpa. There's a breeze whooshing around my body as I cross the street. It's not cold, though. Just a comforting wrap over my t-shirt sleeves around my shoulders beneath the sun. It's a really nice afternoon, at least where I'm walking. It's the kind of day that you'd dream of if you could ask Mother Nature how you'd like to spend your last day. Just a few more steps down the sidewalk now. No one's standing at the wall. I can pick any house. For some reason, I don't want to go to the first one. So I'll go into number two on the right. Not that I can tell them apart. The lawn is perfectly neat. Not even long enough to sway in the lovely breeze. They probably trim it when I'm at work. I was half expecting to see fast food bags on the doorstep since I knew a local church does this at my grandma's place. Every Tuesday, it's something different, whether that's pizza, a sandwich, Mexican, you name it. These people's porches were blank, though. Not even those little wind chimes and gnomes and cats that older people tend to have in their grass. No knickknacks. Ringing the doorbell earns me no response. Does anyone live here, I think? The bunker jokes are getting less funny now. My heart's pounding a little. What if they don't want me here? What if I scare someone into having a heart attack? Are they okay in there? Maybe I should knock. Okay, I'm knocking. Oh my god, this is bad, isn't it? The door swinging open is classic 911 stuff. What if she's hurt? What if I don't get to her fast enough? What if I'm the last one to see her alive? My hands are shaking. My foot crosses the threshold. God, I'm just hoping to see a little old lady jolt awake from her armchair. Probably one of those obnoxious floral velvet affairs no one even sells anymore. She'll jolt awake and say, Son, what are you doing in here? But not like the literal sun, just something for goodness sakes. Oh my god, why is it so dark in here? At least the smell is strangely comforting. It's sweet. Some weird old person incense burning or something. A mix of potpourri and chain smoking was more what I was expecting. Not this heavy, almost sickly blanket hanging in the air. Not that I can complain. Well, I could. The back of it's a little funky, musty maybe. But it almost makes me wish my own house gave some sort of silent greeting. There's no airflow in here though. Just a nasty sort of stillness that I wouldn't choose. But like, who would? Wait, what am I thinking? I'm in somebody's house. And it's dark, and I have no idea if I'm trespassing. Well, I guess I am, but maybe in a helpful way. Where was the lady of the house, or the man, or whoever, just someone? Realizing that I'd been frozen to one three-foot square of carpet, I peel my feet up and I stumble forward coughing involuntarily at the smell as it gets a bit stronger. I stumble forward, half expecting dull pain to radiate from my stubbed toe or three, but I don't hit any furniture. It's just that same rustling carpet. My hand finds a wall, so I slide it along the faintly textured surface, hoping to hit the protruding plastic of a light switch. Heck, I'll take a lamp too. Once again, I am in someone's house. Hello? I keep my voice soft and friendly, at least I hope. Hello? Is anyone home? Are you alright? 
The door was kind of open. Just silence. Dark. Then something brushes my face, sliding against my cheek faintly. Shudders run through me as I jump back, gasping. But a faint buzzing and tingle makes me realize that it was just a fly. Jeez. Three more steps and my hand brushes a cool nub. The light switch. I flip it, but nothing happens. I flip the next one. And with a dubious electric sound, a light above my head flickers in and out. Tinted a sickly yellow. I turn the next one and it practically laughs at me. The flickers faintly illuminate a little sitting area with a chunky TV, a couch, and two gaudy, high-backed floral armchairs. I had called it. Hello? I'll bring a cherry pie next time, I think to myself. Maybe it'll be store-bought, but still. Nothing. Just silence. Entrenched in the ceiling, the light wavers as I move forward. I don't know why I'm even moving forward still. I'm just building a worse and worse case for myself if little old Betty and her son waltz in after a day on the town or something. But maybe it was the open door. Maybe it was the poor electricity. Maybe it was the dread that squirmed in me that I tried to ignore from the moment that the door creaked open, classic movie style. The light fizzes at my back as I shuffle into the dark, starting. It almost makes me laugh, a wild, crazy guy type sound that I don't quite let out at just how absolutely effing corny this whole thing is. Move, I tell myself. Just find out if someone's hurt and bounce, man. Get out of here before you find some little old lady's Victorian figurine collection or something. That incense smell or whatever is strong. It's murky smelling. My feet are slow today. What a lousy hero I am. Isn't that why I'm doing this? A voice in my head asked me. To save a little old lady like the little boy scout that I never was. Well, then save her. She's fallen and she can't get up. She's here. She has to be. Her power's just spotty because she's too short to change the light bulb. Stop freaking yourself out, man. Wait, what was that? Another fly hits me in the face. And swatting it away, I trip and almost fall on my face with the next step. My face feels a bit warmer. Slicker. Instinctively, my arm flies out. Catching the side of the chair, the flickers had showed me. Squelch. My stomach drops. My next breaths shudder as I recoil. Jumping to my feet and pulling my hand away, my face contorting. Oh God, Betty's bleeding. Someone killed her and now her blood's on my hands. Why couldn't it have been dolls? I think. I never thought that that would be crossing my mind. I stay where I'm standing, fighting the insane urge to laugh again, even as my insides turn, almost churning a gag to the surface. The bulb flashes as I make to steady myself. That sweet, sweet-smelling room's buzzing, or maybe my ears are just ringing. My hand and forearm are tinted oddly brown. They're slick. My heart's going a mile a minute. I whimper at the next fly that hits me. Or maybe it's the same one. My body's tingling and I'm barely thinking. Yet my mind's a cloud of panicked words as I steady my chest and, gagging, grab the chair by its back and arm and I tilt it ever so slightly sideways. My right hand fingers feel fat. I joked about an ambulance. What a sicko I am. Oh God, what happened? I think to myself. 
What can I do? I need to get out of here. But I don't know. Move, do something. What? I don't know. Just look. Look and see what you can. It's a nice chair. Except for whatever's on it. I wonder if it's comfortable. Shut up. Why? I, I don't know. Why not? I, I don't... Don't know. It's a nice chair. What's the rest of the little house like then? It doesn't really matter, does it? There goes the light. <laughs> My thoughts are racing. Confused. I cry, can you hear me? And it dies halfway out of my choked windpipe, just as the silhouette of a skull flickers into sallow view, not moving in the slightest. It's adhered to the chair by... by whatever my hand landed in. Every organ in my body lurches. I clutch my chest, forgetting what smears across it as I practically fall into an adjacent chair. There are moth holes in the dress. Some of... of... it is on the face, dripping away. But somehow, I don't think that it's her. My arm doesn't smell like death, and neither does she. That incense is stronger than anything that she'd have put off. I wave away the flies, feeling moisture pulling on the arm that does so. I was right. The chair is comfortable. It's a nice chair. The house is almost like being in a warm rainstorm. Comfortable in a way. I let myself laugh at the flickering light my chest still heaving and eyes avoiding glancing at the skeleton seated next to me. It's now turned to meet my eyes with empty sockets if I dare look. So much for some weekend cleaning, huh? What am I doing here? I managed to wheeze. What happened to you, Betty? Did your kids put you here? Did they forget to call pest control? I glance. A fly buzzes out from her left socket, landing on my shoulder. They seem to be bothering her less now. That's good. I twitch my nose as another little set of legs dances across them. My lips feel kind of fat. You know, like after the dentist or something. My white t-shirt is stained now. A big arm-shaped line across the chest and little drips running down the front of it from the top. Man, Betty burned some strong stuff. Or however she got her house so perfumed. How did it last so long with the door opened anyway? Who cared? Sighing, I quit waving and blowing so much. It's getting hard to move my face away. My left arm's going off with the right. Each heaving breath seems to calm my racing chest. I'm practically ready for a nap. And hey, this is a nice chair.